Toolbox is a resource for preachers and small group leaders. We're going to be looking at Mark chapter 11 verses 1 to 11. The popular title, The Triumphal Entry, is a bit of a misnomer because the entry is not unambiguously triumphal and Jesus doesn't actually enter Jerusalem until verse 11. Though some scholars have suggested that this is a deliberate street production uh, done to provoke talk about messianic ideas. And certainly the collecting of the donkey not only suggests Jewish imagery of the Messiah, but also that there's been some preparation that has gone into this event. Certainly there's something strange in that more effort is put into telling us about the preparation for the event than about the actual event itself. Perhaps this is a parody of Roman imperial parades or using their imagery to suggest what real transformational leadership looks like. Certainly there's a reinterpreting of popular imagery and metaphor and the popular verses of scripture are being toned down in favour of other often disregarded passages. There's no doubt that the passage brings to mind a military procession of a triumphal, nationalistic, messiah type of hero. Here is the crowd marching on the center of power in Jerusalem, proclaiming that their leader is like Israel's last great leader, David. And the march begins in the place where early tradition in Zechariah 14 had said that the final battle against the enemies of Israel would take place on the Mount of Olives. A few hundred years before this, Simon Maccabeus had led a successful military revolt which brought a short period of independence for Israel. This procession brings to mind his triumphal entry into Jerusalem with praise and palm branches and with hymns and songs. You can find that story in 1 Maccabees 13. In AD 66, around the time Mark's Gospel was being written, a zealot movement called the Sicarii had begun what seemed to be a successful struggle to rid Jerusalem of the Romans. The Sicarii then led a kingly procession into Jerusalem, even while they were still fighting to capture the Temple, temple Mount. Josephus tells us that Menahem took some of the men with him, broke open Herod's armory at Masada, distributing the weapons to be used by his guards as he returned in the state of a king to Jerusalem. He became leader of the uprising and gave orders to continue the siege. The parallels to Mark 11 are noticeable. Jesus doesn't procure a war horse, however, but a humble donkey. And Mark is making a big thing of the fulfilling of another quite contrary part of the Zechariah tradition. The Messiah who comes to Zion, meek, riding on an ass, Zechariah 9. And this text also brings to mind the liberation of Jerusalem tradition, but it's expressly anti-military in its tone. And we'll see that the Mount of Olives is in fact used for the purpose of judgment in Mark 13. This narrative is not out-and-out militant and military, and perhaps points in the opposite direction. Perhaps the parade is asking the question of what does genuinely transformative leadership look like? in a kind of parody contrasting Jesus' destiny on the cross with the popular messianic expectations of the disciples, of the reader and of the crowd. It's interesting to note that Mark notes that the crowd were from the fields. And we see this anti-urban bias elsewhere in Mark's Gospel. And it may be valuable to reflect on what real progress is. Certainly part of this for Mark is to contrast the ordinary people from the wealthy, sophisticated powers that be. The rapturous crowds from the fields are looking to Jesus with hope, perhaps in contrast to the people of Jerusalem who will be calling for his crucifixion and the release of Barabbas in about a week's time. There's no reason to think that these are the same people. In fact, Mark indicates that they might not be. Hosanna means save now. In in Psalm 118 and 2 Samuel in 2 Kings, the word is used in addressing kings. Psalm 118 was used liturgically, and Hosanna could be used as a greeting or acclamation rather than a cry for help, sounding a bit like, may God save you. That would be a bit ironic in the story, asking God to save Jesus, even when he seems determined to go to the cross. Bartimaeus called Jesus the son of David twice. 
And this crowd also anticipates that he is the one who will restore the kingdom of David. Jesus quashes this and perhaps that's why the cry will come from the crowd later. Free Barabbas, free the real revolutionary who might restore David's kingdom. Execute this imposter. The crowd believe liberation will come from a rehabilitated temple-headed state and from having better leaders. But that path is a dead end. The account ends in an anti-climax rather than in the hoped for liberation and healing. And when the process and the procession is done, Jesus enters the city, he looks around the temple and goes back to Bethany. The enthusiasm, the wrong image of Messiah and the misdirected hope lead to nothing happening. And Mark has drawn us into this whole traditional messianic symbolism only to throw it away at the end. And just a spoiler alert, when Jesus does intervene in the temple, it's not to restore it, but to disrupt its operation.